Just saying, this is your first, last, and only warning. This video is going to be super spoiler heavy. If you have not seen the movie, it is highly recommended that you leave until you have seen the movie. Just trust me, the movie's great and all, but this video is going to be entirely addressing spoilers and interesting plot points in the film. I've also made a video that was a spoiler-free review. Feel free to go check that out. And if you have seen the movie, welcome. Let's talk about the film. After this theme song. Code monkey, get up, get coffee. Code monkey, go to job. Code monkey, have boring meeting with boring manager Rob. Rob say code monkey, very diligent, but his output stink. His code not functional or elegant. What do Code Monkey think? Code Monkey think maybe manager wanna write login page himself. Code Monkey not say it out loud. Code Monkey not crazy, just proud. Code Monkey like Fritos. Code Monkey like Tab and Mountain Dew. Code Monkey very simple man. Big warm fuzzy secret heart. Code Monkey like you. Like you. What's new, Dino Dudes? It's me, the Media Raptor, and I'm back with part two of my Sonic movie review. Or I guess you could call it part two, I don't know. This is spoiler talk time. Uh, I held off on making this video or releasing it the same day as my spoiler free review, because I wanted to release this. And I know it's cheating, rele releasing it the day the movies were released to the public, but it's two days after the public, they press embargo, and, well, you know, you gotta strike when the iron's hot. So, sorry, but if you don't like it, just don't watch the video till you've seen the movie. So, let's talk about the movie again. Uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about. First of all, there was a lot of, like, hush-hush going around about a character named Longclaw. And I did some digging, there was never a Sonic character named Longclaw, who would to be an owl. The only thing I could find when I typed in Longclaw at first was a link to a Game of Thrones wiki page for a sword called Longclaw that said, Longclaw is a Valerian steel bastard sword that comes from the ancestral weapon of House Mormont for five centuries. I have no idea what that means. I have never watched Game of Thrones, and really, I could not care less. But let me just tell you now, Longclaw is a character. I really like the idea of her character essentially being Sonic's guardian, because it kind of asks a really interesting question, where are Sonic's parents? We see him as a, like a very little kid at the beginning of the movie, and he's roughly, I'd say maybe 12, 11, 12, 13-ish, you know? around that age when the movie itself picks up properly, but I like the idea that Longclaw is essentially Sonic's guardian due to his powers. Now, one of my actual issues with the movie is it never really explains what his powers were. What I could pick up was essentially the whole, like, you know, kind of time distortion of his super speed. I guess that's his power? But me, I always, I kind of figured it would be more to do with the warp rings, and I'll get to that in a minute. But one other thing I want to talk about, especially with Longclaw, is echidnas are in this movie. Yeah, this is in one of the TV spots, and I hate they put it in one of the TV spots, and I'm thankful I saw the movie before I saw the TV spot. And I just said TV spot way too many times there. But echidnas are in this movie. There's essentially a tribe of, well, echidnas that seem much more like the native wild echidnas that some of the comics delved into. And all I can say is Ken Penders is probably going to be really pissed off when he sees this, and to that I say, GOOD. But yeah, so echidnas are confirmed to be in this universe. And you might be thinking, wait, universe? What? what? Echidnas are on Earth? No. The other thing a lot of people were talking about, especially when the trailer came out, is asking the question, wait, the rings can't do that. Sonic can't teleport through rings. Actually, he can. Excuse me. That has been a thing confirmed in the comics a long time ago. 
not just through the special zone like the giant warp ring at the end of some stages. Warp rings in the old, in the Archie comics were a thing up until its cancellation. So actually kudos to the writers for actually going through and finding a actual thing from the comics to, to adapt. It's something that none of the games have ever really adapted and I think is a really interesting idea. So that gets rid of my four biggest spoiler parts. The whole that Longclaw is this very interesting warrior owl who I think is alive. I really hope is alive because I hope we get to see more of her. Yeah, I'm just going to come out and say this. When I saw this movie at the very beginning, people started crying. Like, there were kids crying at the Sonic movie. I mean, I get why, but yeah, I was not really expecting it to get that dark in the very beginning of the movie. Uh, let's talk about the story of it. Admittedly, this story is really cliched. A lot of, you know, plot points that you would expect are here. Stuff like the whole third act breakup, or you're leaving, wait, why are you doing this, or you're not my friend, we just barely know each other. Stuff like that. But, the movie's smart enough to know this is not the reason you're here. And it actually knows to get all of that out of the way within the first maybe 25 minutes. Pretty much up until, like, the first maybe... I'd say 25 minutes or so, there is a bit of the whole, like, wait, you're leaving? Why would you do that? And the whole, like, I don't want to help you. I just, I'm just trying to save my own skin here. But very quickly and very realistically, Tom and Sonic, the cop, end up becoming really close. They become really good friends. And in some ways, Tom kind of becomes like a father to Sonic. And it is really, really wholesome. I believe his relationship with Sonic. I believe that he'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna help this guy. I believe that Sonic would be willing to risk everything for Tom. I believe Tom would be willing to risk everything for Sonic. It It's a really, really good friendship shown on film, and I wish more movies were like this. I don't mind if characters get off to a rocky start, but I feel like we need more movies where characters are just really good friends to each other. Sure, nobody's perfect, and that can be a very important part of kids' media to learn that, but I really like when movies are able to go, hey, here's a really good friendship, here's a really healthy, wholesome, real friendship. And it works. So, you know, but of course there is like a lot of, there is the cliche towards the end of, I stand with my friends, my friends are my power, we're not going to let you hurt him, like the whole town bands together against Eggman and stuff like that. It, it's cliched, but they also know how to throw up jokes in there to make it work. And the action is just a lot of fun, like I said in my other review. So, there's something actually I was not prepared for, and that was the amount of kind of mature content in this movie. Don't get me wrong. The characters aren't like dropping the f-bomb or pissing on the moon or stuff like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just love that video. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Let me try that again. Characters aren't like cursing or pissing on the moon or stuff like that. But surprisingly, there is a decent amount of cursing. There's a decent amount of very mild sex jokes that kids will not get but adults will. And surprisingly, there's a good amount of drinking in one scene. I know you might be going, oh, okay, characters are drinking alcohol, what's the big deal? This is a PG kids movie that shows people drinking alcohol. Back in like the late 80s and 90s, this was a pretty common thing, but for like the past 20 years or so, especially with a lot of Disney films, characters drinking in a bar has kind of become a bit more of a, huh, you don't see that every day thing. No, it's not, like, completely unheard of. Stuff like How to Train Your Dragon, even Tangled did it. But it's re I just think it's kind of like, I was not expecting this. It just was kind of a thing I wasn't expecting, and it... I'm just gonna move on. Yeah. But don't worry, parents. This is not a movie you need to be, like, worried that, oh, it's gonna expose your kids to something horrible. It's a really good movie at the end of the day. Uh, there are two post credit scenes, and I will only spoil one of them because it's in the trailer. Sadly, Dr. Robotnik, or Eggman, as they actually do come to call him, does not get like, the huge mustache and shaved head until the very end. 
when he's been knocked into the mushroom world. Sadly, and I kind of wish they would have done more with that. But if this movie does well, and I really hope it does, I think we can expect a lot more of Jim Carrey in the sequel. So, what else is good about this movie? All the characters in this movie we get to meet are a lot of fun. All the side characters, the main characters, even the one-note joke characters are honestly memorable. They're funny. They all have a unique, distinct personality. Everything about this movie works for what it is, and that really surprised me. Is it going to win Oscars? Probably not. But you know what? It is easily, hands down, the best video game movie ever made. And for a Sonic movie, it feels like a lot of love and heart was put into it. And that is what probably amazes me the most. Not the writing, not the action, not the CG. The amount of passion in this movie. The only real complaint I do have would be the soundtrack. Don't get me wrong, the score is really good, and some of the vocal songs like, speed me up. While I wasn't a huge fan at first, I really do kind of dig now. It's got a good beat, good lyrics. I really was kind of hoping for like some Crush 40 or something along the lines of that, but you know, maybe in the sequel. The two things I do have to point out though, I love this one like very calm, laid back rendition of Green Hills they have, Green Hill Zone at the very end. But the Green Hill Zone theme in the trailer, like in the second trailer when he's playing baseball, they do not have in the movie. And that really bugs me because I really like that music and I want to find it somewhere. Regardless, the movie is still fantastic. I absolutely loved it and I have no qualms giving it a solid 3.5 Raptor Claws out of 4 for quality and a 4 Raptor Claw out of 4 for entertainment value. Go watch the movie, you will not be disappointed, it's a ton of fun, take the family, young and old, if they like Sonic or even if they don't, you don't need to know a lot about Sonic lore. Just trust me on this one, you're gonna have a ton of fun with this movie. With all that being said, until next time Dino Dudes, this has been the Meteor Raptor saying keep cool, feel free to subscribe and like the video if you want, uh, check me out on Instagram and PlayStation Network, stuff's in the uh, description down below. Duh. And yeah, keep cool, and I'll see all you dino dudes around. Later!